So, Caroline Ray, <laughs> Caroline, you've been here from the start yes. of collating the Evelyn Glenny collection. And I remember when everything, or most things, because I know that some things are still at home, were up here in boxes, yes. plastic boxes, cardboard boxes, you name it. And you very kindly, over the past four years, have volunteered to just basically take this whole project by the scruff of the neck and sort it out. Yes. So can you explain exactly what you've been doing? Yeah, so it became clear very quickly that unless we knew what you were doing day by day, we weren't going to be able to place a newspaper cutting to an actual event mm. or a, a costume to an actual event. So we had to know a sequence of events and so we started with the concert programs to try and work out where you were day by day uh, for example <laughs> oh my we, we think this is the first one so this is dated um, October 1974 uh, and uh, it's the presentation of diplomas medals prizes and certificates at Cowdray Hall um, and, and as a youngster you were there playing the piano in this big concert hall uh, because you had the highest marks for grade one piano that year in Aberdeenshire. Oh. So that's that's the first programme that, that we've got in the collection uh, so far, unless you've found others. Um, and it, it, uh, It's kind of interesting as to why I felt a need to keep that because of course I probably was about around eight years old yes, or something. Yes. And I had no idea that I'd ever, you know, follow a career as a musician. No. So, you know, that could have easily gone in the bin or whatever, yes, you know, yes. not, not quite knowing. So it's yeah. interesting that it was kept. So that's quite a personal one. And then there's 2012, the opening ceremony to the London Olympics. So very personal to global millions, perhaps it was billions, was it, watching on the telly as you uh, led the athletes in, as it were, through, through rhythm. So it's a wide range of concert programmes, but what we quickly found was that there were gaps and sometimes a programme didn't tell us the venue or it didn't even give a date because by the time you're there, you don't need to know the date or the venue because you're in the building. So we looked at the admin documents, like the contracts and, and so forth, mm. and we were able to fill in quite a few of the gaps but the thing that we rely on the most are your diaries, because if it's in your handwriting, we think it must be true. <laughs> so um, I've hoiked out some of the earliest diaries. Um, tiny. Yeah, it's a tiny one. Tiny, yes. tiny. So this is from 1982. This is the first week in August. And uh, so 1st of August, you're in Orkney. Then it's on to the Faroe Islands. And then it's, that was obviously a rehearsal day, because the 3rd of August, that's a concert. And then you leave for Norway the next day, and then there are concerts in Bergen, Norway, a couple of those. And then it's travel to Oslo, we're into the next week now. And then there are concerts in Norway, and then off to Sweden the next day, and then finally Denmark. And then uh, at the end of the fortnight, it's return home again. Phew. So those gives us, quite often, that sort of thing will give us a date where we might not have a date. So Absolutely. we always believe your handwriting if we That's need amazing. to. So we have those. Yeah, the diaries are pretty crucial even yes. today yes. you know even if it's an online diary or yes a, but i still like to keep the physical diary yes yeah. yes indeed mm -hmm. yeah. it's a personal yeah. thing isn't it as well it's very um and then we also have <gasps> more more um evidence through posters yeah. some of them are huge like this some of them are a lot smaller some are just like little um uh, postcard leaflet things and I, but and i know that we've got the posters um whenever there was a one of the early uh, CD releases that there were yes. actually posters in the tube stations. Oh, yes, yeah. You know, and they were enormous. Mm. They really yeah, they were. They'll be bigger than this. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we have yeah. a few yeah. of those. Mm. Um, so those, those are those. Wow. And then I'd got to the stage where we were we'd filled about forty files of information, programs, and and contracts and so forth, and um, you very kindly agreed that we could perhaps encourage a few more volunteers in. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we had three more volunteers joined us and uh, Peter loves reading the newspaper. So <laughs> Peter delved into the newspapers 
and the newspapers do come from all around the world. So this China one you can see is from China, um, and uh, you're you're in that one. Um, but of course, because they come from all around the world, sometimes reading them is more of a challenge than otherwise. Um, fortunately, the date. Uh, back to the dates again. The date is here so that we ca we can from this country read it. Um, it's uh, 97 August, 27th of August, 97. And I think I found you in here. Again, there was a helpful clue because we could see your picture. Yes. So we know which article is about you. Yes, on that it's, one. it's <laughs> determining whether that's a review or a preview. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. Some detective work. Or maybe there. an advert for a CD as well. That, it could ah, be yeah, yeah. not yeah. just a concert. Of course, yes. Um, so Peter's been loving doing that. Um, Karen um, has loved looking at the dozens of costumes that you've got, the garments that you've worn for different events. Mm. And um, this is your choice for today, wasn't it? It is. I mean, I chose that one because it was made specifically for the Tandon Water Percussion Concerto. And we needed a, a costume that uh, you knew it was going to get wet, as it were. So, <laughs> you know, you had to be sure that the colour wouldn't really show that so much. And yet it would still be quite feminine and everything. Yes. And uh, so, and believe it or not, that costume is in this particular book, which is Instruments of the Orchestra for Young People. And there's a picture um, of the Water Percussion Concerto and the costume that was worn. And I looked out um, at home earlier today, and even the piece of jewellery that I wore with that costume is um is there too so it's kind of much yes. like the story yes of, of, yes. Uh, of each event really yes. um and that i suppose you know when you look at something a picture or a video or, or anything like that you might then detect which instruments were used so the instrument collection is a massive part yes of, oh, of huge you yes. know yes. and that's a bit that i'm involved with <laughs> and i think now ooh, i don't know we've got about 500 entries I so think. you've just begun then i've just begun i've just begun and it's fascinating i've just reconnected with the instruments in unbelievable ways so i'm, I'm really quite pleased about that and in a way that hopefully we'll be able to find the story behind the instruments Absolutely. then link them to what you were wearing then link them to a concert program yeah. then link those to and yeah. so it goes on. And of course we've got all of the, well not all, but an awful lot of correspondence. Yes. So seeing how yeah. handwritten letters were yes. the kind of order of the day yeah. to then uh, maybe something that was done on a typewriter. Yes. Carbon to... copies. Carbon copies. Oh, yep, absolutely. Faxes. <laughs> Emails. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the newest volunteer, Ray. Yes. I mean, what on earth possessed you to, to be part of this? <laughs> well... When, when it, the advert came out, um, I was looking for something to do at the time because I um, recently stopped working and um, it fitted my interests of sort of being organised and sorting things but with music as well um, and I'm afraid I have been a fan of yours since oh. I was tiny. Um, so it, I just thought it was a great opportunity to come in um, but I think I came in at a brilliant time because actually so much was organised already. Um, it wasn't quite... Um, as not chaotic as it was when you started. Oh. We have lots of boxes, <laughs> yeah. um, huge numbers of boxes, lots of things now divided into years, and so it's a case of taking a year and then sorting through and actually working out with details. Mm -hmm. We do still have things, though, a bit of a mystery where you've got to kind of match things up. So I mean, mm -hmm. I've got a photograph here, which is you with lots of suitcases. Ooh, may I? Yes. Oh. So Gosh. we've got lots and lots of suitcases at an airport. Oh, so, just a line of... so we've got the magnitude of you going away. Yeah. Um, and obviously from the photograph, this one has been actually classified already, but you know, we'd look at uh, maybe the car and the registration plate to see what country it is. And the fact that um, the car is right up in front of the yes. terminal, yes. Yeah. So, which is, is no longer possible right. really, mm -hmm. so that's um, clear. And then for, you know, in terms of time, um, what um, year it is, you're looking at hairstyles and things like that, mm. um, and getting a clue for sort of when it is, and then trying to match it up to the actual event that you were at. Mm. Um, mm. So there is still quite a lot of detective work needed, even when things have been generally boxed up mm. quite nicely. Um, so, and, and I suppose, you know, the challenge, because we had 
uh, um, Amanda. Yes, Amanda uh, was for, organising them originally. Yes, absolutely yes. for a couple of years, and of course this is a person who doesn't know who's in the no. <laughs> who's in the photographs no. and trying to work these things yes. out. Yes. So quite quite amazing, really, what's been achieved. Yes. So I, I'm yes, I am picking up on the work that lots of other people have been doing, um, which is really good. Um, I mean, it's, it's fa fabulous, the collection, though. We've got these wonderful you know, things like this to you with the Companions of Honour. Wow, um, goodness. Oof. That's amazing, really, the collective of people. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, obviously with that, we've got the date. We know exactly when it happened. Yes. Um, and so the interest there is, is, you know, the fact that you're all there with everybody else. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the last time my mum was down here. Ah, yes, Can you believe? Yes. Wow, yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Good so the Guinness, me. that's the personal to the the public sort yes. of the personal thing with the suitcases to the yeah, public side yeah. of it. And I know downstairs we've got a a, a few shelves that, that we call the one off yes. shelves and basically they consist of one of everything that we've been involved with. So the CDs that have been made, the videos or um, the publication of a yeah. piece of music or uh, the books that we've contributed to. Teaching materials. Uh, teaching materials, so things like this particular book. Um, just all sorts of things and it almost gives us a, it, I suppose it helps us with the timeline yes. of things as well because yes. that's a big, yes, yes, yes. big, you're yeah. almost tattooed on your forehead, the timeline. And so we felt the photograph side of it wasn't enough of a challenge for Amanda because obviously that was far too easy. So she looked at magazines as well um, and just to give an indication again of the sort of global reach of this, this is Elle um, and uh, this is only October, although it's a whitey, mighty tome here, but it, we've got an article uh, wow. uh, yep. featuring you in yes. there. It goes across the page. Um, so yeah, just to give an indication of how broad this is. Mm. Um, that meant with three more volunteers that gave me a bit of space to branch out a bit so I started looking at awards. Mm. So we put a little selection around here, um, Grammy I think a lot of people will recognise. It's possible they, people may not recognise the paperweight um, but that was a bit of memorabilia when you went to help the uh, Scottish Football League's uh, centenary, um, <laughs> their, their jolly luncheon, I'm sure it was, but you, you uh, had a little memorabilia. So there's memorabilia and serious awards, um, and there's a lot of them, including um, honorary doctorates. This is the first one that we found. This is um, from Aberdeen. Oh, wow. um, of course, the actual thing is written in Latin. Evelinam. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, beautiful. Yeah, but really interesting. Up to a couple of years ago in Mexico. Uh, it's an honorary degree from Mexico as well, so that's oh. rather nice. Yeah. Um, and it also gave me a chance to have a look at some of the recordings. So um, the first one that we're aware of, you might have to help me with this, the detail of what's happening here with this LP. Oh, well, Ellen Academy was the school, the, the kind of high school, I suppose, I went to. And, uh, and this was a school band and a school orchestra popped together. And of course, music was just so crucial at school. And uh, we were all trooped to a, a sand dune in Newborough, which is a place between Aberdeen and the small town of Ellen. And which I think now Donald Trump has built his, his golf course on. Right. So and we were all huddled together on the sand dune. You can't see the sand, unfortunately. And uh, and taken, I think that's me and uh, one of my brothers playing the trombone there. And just, you know, it brings back an awful lot of memories. But it just shows you the opportunities yes. that we were given yes. as young people. Yes. I mean, this was a big deal for us, yes. you know, and a real stepping stone for many people in this group because several of us went in for music. We continued right. with our music studies. Yes. And, and for many also who went into other professions, they kept their music going. Yes. So this was a big deal for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. Um, and also, of course, there are, again, the global recordings. So yep. I've got a cassette here from the last night of the proms, wow. um, the 100th season. And of course, the uh, VHS. Incredible. <laughs> um, we got of those. And I, um, think, I think, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I think, um, 
I might still be the only solo percussionist who's ever done a last night of the proms. So it was a bit of a historical thing yes. going on there. And this was all after the 1992 premiere of Veni Veni yes. Emanuel. And when the proms saw the success of that ah, piece, yes. they felt confident that, yes. well, perhaps, you know, we, we yes. can have a percussionist yes. on the last night. Because subsequent to that, you've done quite a few of the last night of the proms in the park, in the park varieties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but actually at the Albert Hall, yes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, and then um, more of one of the more recent then recordings with Mark Knopfler. Yes, um, the soundtrack for yes. Altamira, the film. Yes. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, yeah. amazing. But the recordings aren't just of a sort of musical nature because I've got here a script from Blue Peter from 1996. Oh, I should have brought the badges in. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So you were, on, you were on a lot of talk shows through the early 90s. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, including Blue Peter more than once. So there's mm -hmm. that side of the recordings. And then I've also uh, looked out um, the Linda LaPlante Trial and Retribution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got the, these are the scripts. Amazing. From, from all of those. And, and it was that project that inspired me to uh, grow the Waterphone ah, collection yeah, because right. she was so intrigued by the instrument, the yes. Waterphone. And, uh, and I thought, you know, ooh, you know, she's really keen yeah, on that, yeah. so I might try and, yes. and purchase some more. Yes. So, um, so that's that's why I've I've got quite a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and now now that we have Ray with us now, um, and and our immediate ambition is to try and work out exactly where you were day by day, mm. right the way up to the present day. Um, we're very nearly there. We're just a few yeah. years away now from completing that timeline of not just your concerts, of which we have already logged th over 3,500 of your appearances, including um, radios, t TV interviews yeah. and concert performances, 3,500. Uh, we've logged over 2,000 solo percussion concerto or recitals um, mm. we have logged over 2,000 concert programs posters that sort of publicity mm. and over 3,000 admin documents so mm. we're almost at a stage where we're not just saying we think that was the day you did it we've got at least three bits of evidence that tell us that was the day that yeah. whatever happened and we're very nearly very nearly up to date with that now that's amazing and and that's actually not dealing with the digital side of well, things or not as much no and this we, we turn to Ray now who over the last week or so has been looking at hundreds of digital photos um yeah uh, good luck with that but they are organized by date as a starting point mostly yeah. so Amazing. it will be a case of choosing good exemplar ones to be able to put on the record yeah, yeah. and of course really the 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 aim of all of this is feeding into a center of, of listening because that's what the whole journey has been about and allowing the stories of all of these pieces to come yes. alive and for yeah. people to really connect with those stories yes. not just from a musician's point of view but but you know from someone who's curious from an educational point of view from a composer's point of view from a manufacturer's point of view social history social history absolutely yes. and as we're we're in semi lockdown yeah. at the moment yes. not not completely in lockdown now but you know that has had a massive impact on on the journey and once we do look back on this period well it'll be an amazing period actually yes. to, to see because dates are in the diary but not happening yes you know how curious yes. is that who would have guessed um, that and you have logged 500 instruments with your busy oh, diary, that would never have happened not, ordinarily. Not at, the, at the rate, no. no not, and not, I suppose, even being able to to really pick each piece up and, yes. and reconnect yes. with it and, and have a good play of it and explore and learn new te techniques and so on on that. But you've also got some scores yes, there. Yes, talking scores. about the instruments. So um, yeah. the, there are nine filing cabinets 
uh, crammed full of musical scores, and I am aware. Some at home as well. And I'm aware that there are a lot more (laughs) back at the ranch. Yes. So some of these um, are in pristine condition, but some are obviously um, pieces that you have played a lot, and this has got your own performance notes on it. So, you know, in the future, I can see that being of. uh, Look at how that's obviously quite an interesting page turn that one. (laughs) Um, <laughs> it has to go quickly. Um, and I can see people finding that of interest, you know, um, in years to come, how these things have developed. Um, but then then from, from that, um, we then have these large works printed, you know, the whole orchestra scores and many, many of these um, mm. showing. And the collection of these musical scores shows the development of this repertoire. Absolutely, and I you think know. I think on that score it says not final because yes. I normally yes. write if it's yep. final or not final, not final. because yeah. things are it, you were, in, were helping the composer with the development of it almost. Would that be correct to say? It, sometimes, and sometimes the composer might just you know want to change right. things. Sometimes right. they might want to change things after the first performance after as well. Heard, yes. You know, yes. and that's an interesting piece that you've chosen, the Concerto for Percussion and Orchestra by Sally Beamish because it's for percussion and narration where the percussionist actually recites Doric, which is the, the tongue that we speak in the northeast of Scotland. Yes. So that was very much, dare I say, with me in mind, yes. you know, not meaning yes. to be no. egotistical, but just because that's the, the language that we speak when we're yes. at home. And it's interesting, really. So fascinating. But I think what... what even I'm surprised by, after all these years, but seeing the work that you've done, is just how amazingly you've created um, codes for everything. Yes. You know, so that things can be recognised. We're beginning to see where things can be located. And this gives us a chance to put on exhibitions, yes. you know, in different parts of, of the world, really. Yes and uh, it could be themed exhibitions and so on, and that's quite fascinating. Um, but there's still a long way to go. Oh yes, oh yes. yes. A long way to yes. go. So, I hope you're still enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> hope you're not ready to jump out the window or something. <laughs> no, there's, there's many years to go, uh, I think, here. <laughs> and it is a living collection it as is. well, which it is, is fascinating. Yes. Yeah. Well, from my point of view, I'm just thoroughly thoroughly indebted you know to all of the dedication the focus the time that you've given it's always a lot of fun having you around it really is because it has to be enjoyable for us yes all. oh yes yes so watch the space <laughs>